Welcome to Music Theory Pre-Grade 1, Week 2. This is brought to you by To Enable. This week we will take a look at ledger lines and spaces, note values and rest. Covering notes on the keyboard, ledger lines and spaces, note values and how to write notes. Let's begin our Week 2. Firstly, let's take a look at notes on the keyboard. We all know that a piano has a set of black and white keys. A set of black and white keys. Let's take a look at this is an example of a keyboard. White keys, black keys. Set of black and white keys. Letters used for keys are the same letters or same alphabets that we use in music from A counting to G. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are the letters that we use in music and letters that we use for our white keys. All white keys are called natural keys. White keys, we call them natural keys. The black keys are situated between the white ones. As you can see, the black keys are situated between these ones. And they are named after the white keys. So we name the black keys after the white keys. For example, this is called the middle C. The note after the middle C or the first bl black note after the middle C will be called a C sharp. Why C? Because it's named after this C. This is D. And this note is called a D sharp when going up. It's named after the D, the white natural D. But we will also look at keys or black keys as accidentals in the following chapters of grade 1, which we will learn more about. The C in the middle of your keyboard is called the middle C. The next note from the middle C will be a D. This is a middle C and is located on the ledger line of the staff. That's below the staff. The ledger lines are lines and spaces below or above the staff. It's on the space. The E is on the first line of the staff. F on the first space of the staff. Then we have a G on the second line of the staff, which is the treble clef, sitting on the treble clef. A on the space. B line. C on the space. Remember that notes above the middle C Notes above the middle C, they fall under the treble clef and notes below the middle C fall on the bass clef. Look at the B sitting on the bass clef. The middle C's are the same. A, the last line of the bass clef. Then we have G on the last space of the bass clef. We have F on the fourth line of the bass clef. Then followed by and E sitting inside the space. We have D on the line, C on the second space of the bass clef. This is where notes are located on the staff. Now, in this grade, we will look at two clefs, the treble clef and the bass clef. As we have mentioned before, that we are dealing with the treble clef and the bass clef. Ledger lines and spaces. What is a ledger line? Ledger lines or spaces are lines that appear above or below the staff. Lines, short lines that appear above or below the staff. They function when pitches are higher or lower or below the lines and spaces on the provided staff. They function when notes are higher or lower than the notes on the given staff. And the distance between the ledger lines has to be the same as the, the, the lines and spaces on the staff. So that means these lines, which are called ledger lines and spaces here, have to be the same as the lines and spaces of the staff. Avoid extra ledger lines below or above the notes. Meaning, you cannot place a line here if there is no node required. So you can't close this with a line. So avoid extra ledger lines below or above 
the nodes. Let's take a look at examples of ledger lines. The last node of the treble clef, we all know that it's seated on the line which is F. Then starting followed by G, this is the first space. Then the ledger line would be A space ledger line C space ledger line E space. Also below, the last note will be E of the treble or, or the first note of the treble clef is E. Going down, D, sitting on the space, ledger lines and spaces, space, ledger line, A, space, G, F on the ledger line. Same goes the The last note on the line, or the last line of the bass clef is A, followed by space, B, C, line, these are ledger lines, ne? D, ledger line, space F, G, ledger line, A, sitting inside the space. And this note here, the first line, is supposed to be a G. First line of the base clef. Going down, F on the space, falls on the ledger lines and spaces. E, ledger lines and spaces. D, seated on the sp inside the space. C, line b space a line g on the space all these are ledger lines and spaces this is how they follow each other you look at the last note of your clef this is a treble clef the last note is f then everything that goes uh, above the last note is gonna fall on the ledger line and space and also below the e here falls on the ledger line and space same applies for our bass clef, the last note of the bass clef seated on the line is A. Everything that comes uh, above the A falls on the ledger line and spaces. Also below the G, ledger lines and spaces. Let's recap the definition of a ledger line. Remember we said a ledger line is a short line placed above or below a staff to accommodate notes that are higher or lower than the range of the staff ledger lines and spaces. Let's move along to note values and rest. In music, we use various rhythms. Some notes are played shorter or longer than others. Therefore, notes have different values and times. Rhythms of notes can be tapped or tapped out to determine the note value or pulse. This has nothing to do with tempo. A rhythm it's just how you play your notes. You can play them shorter or longer, but the tempo doesn't change. You keep a constant tempo. A tempo, what does a tempo mean? A tempo is the speed of a beat. The speed of a beat is called tempo. Let's take a look at the different notes that we'll be dealing with in pre-grade one. We have a semi-brief. We have a minim. We have a crochet, we have a quaver, and we have a semi-quaver. Semi-brief, this is how it looks. An oval, not round shape, bit shaded on the sides. Then the relative length, it has a relative length of a whole note. And in time, in 4-4 four, four time, it has 4 beats. Last for 4 beats. This is how a semi-brief rests. Looks like it's a bar facing down. Then an oval shape for our minim with a stem going up. It's not shaded, it's left out like this. Smaller than the semi brief. This is called a minim. Relative length of a half note. In 4 4 time, it has two beats. The rest is similar to the semi brief rest, but this one is facing up. Crochet. Oval shape. Same size as the minimum, the oval, but it's shaded. Has the same stem, stretching up or down, but on an octave length. If this note was seated on a C, the stem is going to stretch 
to the next C. The relative length of a quarter note, crochet quarter note, in four four times worth one beat. This is how a crochet rest looks like. Crochet rest. Quaver. An oval shape similar to a crochet and a minimum. And it has a stem just like the crochet. It's shaded just like a crochet. But this one has a flag. It has a flag. Quaver has a flag. Relative length of an eighth note. It lasts for half a beat in for four time. Then we have our semi quaver. Also oval shape, same size as the crochet minimum and quaver. Shaded like a quaver and a crochet and has a stem, same size but has two flags. Has two flags. Remember, the quaver only has one flag. Then this one, two flags. It's called a semi quaver. It's half of a quaver. 16th note length. Quarter beat for four time. And also the rest, semi quaver rest has two flags. Then the quaver rest only has one or one flag. A semi brief four beats. A minimum is half of a semi brief. A crochet is half of a minimum. A quaver is half of a crochet. A semi quaver is half of a quaver. Subdivisions. One whole note. It's a semi brief. Two half notes. Two minims. They make up one whole note. Then four quarter notes. It's four crochets. They make up one whole note, which is a semi brief. Eight eighth notes. That's eight quavers. They make up one uh, semi brief, which is one whole note. Sixteenth, sixteen sixteenth notes. Sixteen notes, which are sixteen, they make up one semi brief. Now we're gonna take a look at what an octave is. An octave. Is an interval interval means distance between two notes so an octave is an interval of an eighth eight notes higher or below the given note so eight notes higher or below the given note that's what an octave is let's move on how to write notes remember note heads are not or they are not round in shape but are oval note heads are oval not round the semi brief oval is obviously bigger than the others, as we have seen on the PV on the previous page. Note flags, note flags on quiver, note flags on quiver notes are positioned on the right side of the stem. Note flags are positioned on the right side. Note flags, right side. Two or more notes can be beamed together. Joining notes, beaming meaning joining notes with flags together. Notes with flags must be beamed together if they are two or more. This is an example of beaming notes. These are two quavers that are beamed together. But if it was uh, semi quavers, there were there was going to be another line here. So having two lines for semi quavers. But since it's just two quavers. It's just one shaded line or one thick line. Beamed quavers. Note head. As you can see, not round but oval. This is a stem stretching to an interval or a length of an octave from the given note. Note stems. When the note stem goes up, it is written on the right side of the note head. When it goes up, it's written on the right side of the note head and when the stem goes down it is written on the left side of the note head written on the left side of the note head when it's facing down notes are an octave in length and should always be straight the note stems ne? stems as you can see 
They are an octave in length.